welcome to Michelle Sews again. I'm Michelle. Today um, I am continuing my 30 days of sewing hashtags, which I failed to mention in my last couple of videos, but they were also hashtag videos. Um, anyway, so today what I'm going to do is give you a review of the um, pattern, fat, pattern Fantastic hmm? uh, Valley Dress, but I did the blouse version. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I've posted um, an image there, which I'll pop up here. Um, and uh, I just wanna walk you through what my experience was with this pattern. So um, if you're not familiar with it, um, the Valley dress slash blouse is a 70s inspired boho style, like very flowy um, uh, top and dress. It's got these really big voluminous sleeves that are beautiful. Um, and it's got this um, bodice piece that's more fitted. So it's not all like oversized, kind of like uh, the Wilder gown, even the bodice piece is oversized. In this one, in this pattern, the bodice piece is a little more fitted. Um, it's got a couple of ties and it, even the top version, the bottom is really flowy. So um, I really loved the outcome of this dress um, but I did have some like pros and cons of the pattern itself that I wanted to review. All right so the pattern comes in sizes ranging from 6 to 26. Um, they recommend that you really the critical um, measurement that you need to be worried about is the high bust um, and so from that perspective the sizes range from a 31 and a half inch to a 51 and 3 sixteenths inch. Um, I ended up making the size 26, which is the largest size, based on my bust measurement of 51 and a half. And I feel like the top fits me um, the way that I like things to fit. It's not super tight. Um, it fits with just enough ease in the um, chest area that it's comfortable. I have full range of movement. Um, and obviously the bodice, the rest of the um, top is very loose fitting. So. Um, that part's comfortable. It recommends fabrics that are um, mostly lightweight wovens. Um, so anything in that range will work. It says that it's a skill level intermediate. I consider myself a confident beginner or advanced beginner. I don't feel like I've progressed to intermediate. Um, and there weren't any like really tricky techniques in this. Um, it was involved, there were a lot of steps, and I'll get into that in a minute, um, but they weren't difficult. And the instructions were actually really good. Um, they walk you through step by step. They have, photo not photographs, but they have illustrations where um, necessary to help kind of visualize some of the verbiage. So I felt like the instructions were, were pretty good. I might've got hung up here and there, but once I like laid the pattern out or the um, what I had sewn so far out and really kind of thought it through, then I could work it out. Um, but that didn't happen that much. It was, it was rare. So I would say a confident beginner, like I, I feel like you could do this. A, a beginner beginner, it's probably a little bit much. Um, just because some of the, like, especially around the, um, the facing, the front facing where the ties are, that part can get a little bit tricky. The rest of it's pretty straightforward though. Okay. So here's what I liked about the pattern. First of all, I absolutely love the end result. I think that it came out beautiful. Even my husband, like I was wearing it after I, I wore it to, um, film my Friday sews on Friday. And um, my husband came home after I was done filming and he's like, oh, that one's cute. Um, so, uh, and he doesn't, the thing that I love about my husband is he doesn't give me a compliment unless he truly means it, which I appreciate because then I know um, when he says it that it's genuine. Um, so when he, he said it, so I'll take it. Um, all right, so although <laughs> I'm putting this under the likes, even though I didn't enjoy all of the stay stitching because they have you stay stitch everything pretty much. It really did help make a really refined finished garment. Um, there was a lot of stay stitching. They had you like do things in batches. So you stay stitched everything all at once and then you like pre-pressed everything all at once. 
And while that seemed like tedious, it, I actually liked the fact that it was done in batches because by the time I got to the step where I needed to sew something, I was just ready to sew. So um, I did like that. Um, they have a chart in the instructions that tell you once you've finished gathering the pieces that need gathering. So like, I, um, like um, at, on the yoke, when you attach the skirt to the yoke, when you attach the sleeves, um, yeah, so the front yoke and the back yoke, those required um, gathering and then the sleeves required gathering. And um, they had you do like the three stitch gathering technique, um, but they have a chart in the instructions that tell you once you've gathered it, this is how long it should be. I found that to be very helpful rather than me like fiddling with having it like up to the piece that it was gonna marry up to and you know, um, uh, playing around with the gathers and fitting it that way. I felt, I found that like just m matching it up to a tape measure, I, I, I personally found that to be pretty helpful. So um, yeah, I, I liked that. All right, so then what are the things that I didn't like? So as a person who prefers cutting my patterns over tracing, which I'll get into that in a second, um, this pattern, the printed pattern, I, so I, I bought the PDF, I had it shipped off to PDF plotting, I got it back, and then because I prefer cutting my patterns, I didn't like the fact that pattern pieces overlapped. So the top pattern overlapped the full dress pattern. So there's a different, and if it was just a straight shirt and dress, it wouldn't have mattered because you could just fold the dress length up and cut at the, at the shirt, but that's not the style of this pattern. It's got a very swoopy, swoopy <laughs> um, hem for both the top and the dress. So the swoop for the shirt extends past the, um, the skirt. So I had to cut that out separate which meant that my, my top and my skirt were separate. And if I ever wanna make the dress, which I'm pretty sure I do, I've gotta tape that back together. Um, same thing with the neckline. So the front and the back uh, yoke piece was also overlapped and they have, which wouldn't have been a problem except for the fact that they have different neck heights. So I had to cut, and because it was curved, I had to cut the top, the front off, because the front actually came up higher than the back, which I thought was weird. It, what do I know, it worked out. Um, the, I had to cut the top piece off after I cut that fabric piece out to cut the um, back piece out. And then I had to tape it back together um, if I want to use it again. I understand this is um, yet another argument in favor of tracing my patterns instead of cutting. And uh, for my Me Made May pledge, I am committed to tracing my patterns this month and getting in the habit just to see if I can transition. Whether I do it permanently or not, I don't know. I'm not committing to that, but I am committing committed to it for this month um, and we'll see how it goes. So it was too late for this one for me, but this is the one that kind of broke, it was the straw that broke the camel's back that made me feel like, okay, I need to investigate this pattern tracing thing and we'll see where it goes. And then the second thing that I didn't like about the pattern, <laughs> um, and I don't know if it was just my download that was wonky, but my instructions were out of order. So after step 50 on page 11, it jumped to step 57 on page 12. And it wasn't until page 14 that we got back to step 50. Yes, I know, you should read your instructions all the way through before you get started. I don't usually do that. Maybe now I will. Um, luckily it was toward the end, so I didn't realize that step 50 existed. I thought it was just missing. So I was close to like 
I can't remember what step it was on, but it was close to the, like the end. So I just kind of worked out what was left to be done. And then I found step 50 and I was like, oh, okay, I did it right. Score for me. Um, so it worked out okay. It's just, um, you know, again, if you are a true beginner, that could have flubbed you up. All right, so then I, so those are the things I liked and didn't like about the pattern. Here's some mistakes that I made that were no fault of the pattern. They were on, on me. So <laughs> when I was cutting out the pattern, which I realized this is also something that I wouldn't have, that wouldn't have happened if I was tracing, um, I completely missed cutting out the ties, the, the tie piece. And because I had already wadded it up, thrown it in the trash, and my husband had already emptied the trash, by the time I started making the top, it what when I got to the tie, to the steps to make the tie, I was like, oh, I don't have that piece. And I didn't know how long it was. Um, I probably, if I'd have thought about it, I probably could have worked it out on my own. But I happen to have um, a bag full of stri long, long strips of lots of different colors of grow grain ribbon. And it's probably thicker than the ties that the pattern calls for. It may or may not be. I don't know, I don't have the pattern piece. But I think it worked out well. Um, it was a lilac color. It coordinated well with the, um, both of the fabrics that I used um, in my top. So it, it worked out okay. Um, all right, so then the next thing is um, I didn't have enough fabric. Now, I kind of mentioned this in my Friday sews. I bought those two um, batik fabrics um, from StyleMaker and my intention was to make this top for the Sew April blouse challenge hosted by um, Kristen from the, the Dahlia Society and Gabrielle from the Cloth Edit. Um, my intention was to make a blouse from a free pattern from Mood. Once I decided to sit down and start sewing, that pattern just has a ton of buttons down the back and I just didn't feel like it. So I scrapped that idea and I thought that those two fabrics would look great as the valley top and I knew I wanted to make that top so I was like, okay, let's do it. So I, um, I cut out the, uh, the yoke um, because it was the smaller piece. So I had one yard of the darker purple and I had two yards of the lighter purple with the leaf print. So I knew that the yoke was gonna need to be made out of the, um, the darker purple. And then my goal was to make the sleeves and the skirt of the top out of the lighter purple with the with the leaves. Once I laid out the pattern piece for the skirt on the leaf fabric, it was immediately clear that I wasn't gonna even come close to having enough to make those. Those sleeves are huge. They're voluminous, they're wide. Um, I, it, it, I wasn't even coming close. So I went ahead and cut out the skirt and I was thinking about whether or not I would go online and buy some more of the leaf fabric or um, what was I gonna do? And I was staring at my stash and I saw this lilac linen and I thought that could coordinate. And when I laid it up next to the two fabrics, I thought it looked pretty good. Um, I wasn't 100% sold, but I was like, I wanted to make the top. I wanted to make it in time to um, fulfill the challenge. And I was down to the wire. I mean, I literally finished the shirt on April 30th. Um, so I just went ahead and did it. And the reality is once it came together, I think it looked great. Um, so I was really, really happy with the results. Um, so yes, uh, mistake, I didn't have enough fabric, but it turned into a positive because I think it looked really nice. Um, and then <clears throat> the last mistake, the first two are mistakes, but nothing that like were like hugely negative. They didn't impact the quality of the outcome of the garment. This last one is a true mistake. It impacts the quality of the garment, um, but I don't think it's obvious. I would probably unpick it and redo it if I thought it was egregious. I don't think it is but it is definitely something, it's a technique that I need to master because it's one that I've struggled with on other um, garments as well. And that is the 
um, very bottom of the V of the deep um, V neck is kind of bunched up. And I'll try and take a close up picture and show it up here so that you can see. It just, um, I mean, I thought I followed those guidelines perfectly. I did, you know, it was like five eighths of an inch from the center down and then it kind of graded to a V and I got to a point and I pivoted. Like I thought that I did that all correctly. So I don't know what I didn't do right that caused it to bunch like around the bottom of the V on the front. Um, I'm, it's not really obvious because the lower tie is right above that and falls right over it. And it also like it's bunched in a way that could be considered almost like a gather um, right there. Um, so it could look like it's intentional. It doesn't look bad. It's just not the flat perfect V that it was intended to be. Um, and because it's a loose boho style, the bunch doesn't, it kind of fits with the theme of the top. But so it doesn't bother me um, in a way that makes me want to unpick it and fix it. But uh, like I said, it's definitely a technique that I need to figure out because this isn't the first time this has happened to me. It's definitely a technique I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong and fix it for the next time. All right, so that's really everything I have to say about um, the valley dress and blouse. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether I will end up making the dress. Um, it is a beautiful dress. It's a beautiful pattern. Um, I almost feel like I want to make it again just so that I can um, improve on the things that I messed up the first go round. But in the long run, at the end of the day, I think that the blast came out very pretty. And I was really, um, I was really pleased with the outcome and very proud to submit it as my So April blouse um, submission for the challenge. So um, that's about all I have to say um, for that. If you made this top and you've got pictures of it on Instagram, um, link below, cause I would love to check yours out. Um, I, anytime I make any um, pattern, I'm always all over Instagram looking at other people's versions because I love to see the inspiration. I love to see, you know, how it came out, um, how did they interpret it versus how I did. Um, and it gives me inspiration for other patterns, maybe not that one, but I would love to see yours if you've made this. Um, and that's about it. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. I hope that the weather is beautiful. It's actually quite gorgeous here today. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you're getting in a lot of sewing. All right. Thanks for joining me. Bye.